Hello and welcome to For the Quantum Grammar Shoot podcast, the only podcast of its kind on the interwebs that I'm aware of. I'm your host, Colin Jason Ivy Matthew Colin Glass. You may call me Jason. And in this podcast, I will discuss various topics as viewed the best I can through the lens of the wonderful technology known as correct sentence structure communication, parse syntax grammar, brought to the public in 1988 by the late Colin David Ife and Wayne Colin Miller. And in this particular edition of the podcast, I'm basically going to share with you my generalized methods of navigation, whether it's out there in the public, whether it's in the confidential, anywhere in the sea of space, as a general rule, when dealing with people that I don't know and I'm not familiar with, these are the mechanics that I use. Now, I will tell you that very rare is the scenario when I have an issue with someone, when static occurs, when it doesn't go smooth. Very rarely, like one in a million. Usually, whether I'm on the phone with a sales person, a business, or whether I'm in person, which is even better for these types of navigations, for the smoothness of these types of navigations, it very rarely ever erupts into negativity or aggressiveness or conflict. And... I really put it down to the three principles. Maintenance of rule one, rule equal. Position of peace and neutrality. Balance of the honor and the grace. It's really that simple. And it does not matter what culture the other contract parties are, what race the other contract parties are. It just, it doesn't matter. The mechanics that I use pre-suppose that everything's going to go smoothly. Now you may say, well, Jason, why, why are you bringing up race? To bring up race is to promote racism. I bring it up in a knowledge cultivation context here. Because while I try 100% best not to think in terms of blankets, blanket statements or to judge people based upon their race or their culture, I realize that there are many, many, many people out there on earth who do use race and culture to ju automatically judge other people or predetermine how they're going to treat them at the very least. Like if you're... Okay, let's say, for example, let's say, for example, your neighborhood, wherever you live. Now, this is just a theoretical example, okay? The neighborhood where you live is mostly made up of Martians, okay? People from Mars make up your neighborhood. They run the stores, the restaurants, the businesses. They live in the subdivisions, the farms. They're mostly Martians in this community. Now, some people from uh, Earth decide to move in there. Earthlings, okay? They start moving in there. Now, these Earthlings that moved in there, for whatever reason, they left their home the, the homes where they lived because they had to, because they, for whatever reason, they were ostracized from their community for maybe they, they stole, maybe they shoplifted, maybe they did other things, who knows, but they had to leave. And so they go into this Martian community and start going over there to do business or whatever. And, they just happen to rob a Martian store. They just happen to dine and dash 
at a Martian restaurant. Or at the very least, they're just rude to the Martian cashiers, to the Martian waitresses, to the Martian salespeople. They're just rude. Or maybe it's not even that they're rude. Maybe it's just that their culture is so different from Martians that they're alien. The earthlings are alien and and Martians construe the way these earthlings act as rude. So therefore... Martians begin to look at earthlings in a certain way. So that if they see an earthling walking down the street, they're like, ah, here comes that piece of shit. Ah, they're all no good. Ah, you know, we got to kick them out. Blah, blah, blah. They don't belong here. And then earthlings begin looking at Martians the same way. They never treat us fair. They're the majority in this neighborhood and, and they're racist against us. They don't like us. They hold us down. Ba 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 ba. Every time I walk into a Martian restaurant, they're looking at me funny and they're talking in their Martian language, making fun of me. You're talking shit about, you know what I mean? I'm sure you've seen this and I know you can just replace the word Martian and Earthling with whatever race you want to. And you will find truth in that. If you are, you know, you know, from different races and things like that, you, you'll find truth in what I'm saying. You understand what I'm saying. Okay, so I am aware of that phenomenon when I go to different locations. Now, I know if I go to a certain location to go to a certain restaurant or a certain business, whatever it is, uh, and it's predominantly this culture or this race, I'm familiar with a lot of those things, so I easily navigate through those things because I'm aware of certain personality traits that are inherent. Or I'm also very cautious because of the possible racism towards me that might be inherent in that area. But folks, I have never had a problem, not not really, with other races or other cultures towards me. Maybe sometimes walking in the door, there's a little trepidation on their part. They look at me a little funny or a little weird or maybe contemptuous. But once I open my mouth and I start talking and looking at them in the eye, shaking hands, asking first names, getting on a first name basis, breaking the ice, that all goes out the door. And everything is, you know, smooth. Everything's cool. And it comes down to these techniques that I use. And it even works on the phone, folks. It even works on the phone. Like, for example, the first thing that I usually do on the phone is if it's, if it's a good salesperson, they will credential themselves by at least giving their first name. When it comes time for my kuleana, for my response to that person on the phone... I will use their first name in my response, not only so that I remember it, because I'm terrible with names, but so that it establishes a connection. It establishes a relationship. Now we're on a first name basis, and that implies that there's some sort of friendliness there. Not saying we're friends, friendliness. There's an etiquette there. There's a protocol there. That now we're on first name basis, we're going to be respectful. We're going to be honorable and graceful. First name basis. Because friends call each other by their first names most times. So the, I do that. And I also ask how they're doing. Because a good salesperson will ask you, the customer, how you're doing. Well, I do the same technique. And I do credit, you know, much of what I learned about personal interactions with people through a company that I used to work for a few years ago. I was a manager and I, I, I was charged with managing a crew of mostly male, 25 to 30 guys from different countries and different cultures, whether it was Cuba, Mexico, Puerto Rico, the Congo, 
Burma, which I know it's not called Burma anymore. I don't know what it's called right now. Uh, Thailand, China, Kazakhstan, Iraq, Afghanistan, all different types of cultures. Some of them didn't even barely speak English, but I was still tasked with directing them to perform their duties every day, day in, day out, to discipline them, to make sure that no one got in any trouble, the different cultures didn't fight with each other. And it was a great learning experience in communication for me. But every year for a couple of weeks, this company that I worked for, it would be required that for like one or two weeks after I was done working for the day, I had to go to what they called their university with the rest of the managers, which there were hundreds. We'd all sit in a big fancy restaurant that had a stage and then a guy would come on and teach us about customer service teach us about public speaking, teach us about how to deal with different types of personalities, whether it was the high-paying clientele members of that particular company that I was working for, or whether it was an employee, or whether it was other managers, or whether it was uh, salespeople on the phone that you're interacting with, whether it was cold calling people, all different stuff that I learned about. And I credit a lot of my knowledge and skill in navigating situations smoothly with these couple weeks every year of schooling that this company gave me. Invaluable. So that's the first thing I do when I'm on the phone. I establish a personal relationship or the appearance of a personal relationship. Now, depending upon the situation, depending upon the situation, keep that in mind, folks, depending upon the situation, I will either establish that I have knowledge of something and speak from that position, or I will establish that I have knowledge of something, but also establish that there are a lot of things I don't know about and come in with that humility and sort of position myself as someone who's willing to learn from the other person at the other end of the line on the phone. I find that this... (laughs) I find that this works very well with quote-unquote government people um, in positions of power. Whether, whoever it is on the other end of the line, like in your local township offices, your local boroughs, your local courthouses, clerks, secretaries. If you speak to them with humility, no matter how they speak to it, it doesn't matter what their tone is to me. If someone is condescending to me, if someone acts as if they're arrogant or maybe they think I'm stupid, it doesn't matter if they do. I, I don't take it personal because I know it has nothing to do with me because they, they don't freaking know me. How would they know if I'm stupid or not? They don't know me. So I know that it's on their part, you know, that's their deal. However, they view people. That's their, what can we call it, deficiency. That doesn't matter to me. So if they meet me with hostility or condescension right off the bat, I I don't even pay any attention to it. I continue on with my position of peace, neutrality, balance of honor and grace, maintenance of rule and rule equal. And I add in extra humility So that they think, they have the illusion in their mind that, oh, this person knows, oh, Jason knows he's stupid. So I'm going to school him here. You know, he's going to learn something here. He knows his place, right? And once you get people thinking that, especially, and I'm talking specifically in government capacities that act like this, and people that have dealt with with, uh, individuals in these offices know exactly what I'm talking about, the attitude that you will get. Most times, not most times, but a lot of times, at least from my own personal experience. Once you get them thinking that and you're polite about it, suddenly that uh, arrogance turns into like bravado of some sort, you know, where 
now you have an, them in a position where they think that you are submitting to them or that you have subordinated yourself to them. Now you can ask them questions about shit that you want to know about. And they're going to spill the beans. They're going to talk your ear off because they love to, to show that they know it all. They're know-it-alls. They know more than you. And now they're sharing it. Now they're spilling the beans with you. And you can get a lot of information that way. And over time, if you establish a relationship with those particular people, you remember their first names. And as you establish a relationship with them, on down the line, their arrogance will dissipate once they realize who they're dealing with, which has happened to me at my local post office and places like that, or down at the local township building. They, they, they treat me like, I, I don't even know how to explain it, folks. They're, they're super nice to me. They smile. They're friendly. However, they look at me with some sort of weird, I don't even know if I can call it fear in their eyes, but there is something in their eyes where they're just uncertain about me. And they're just nice as pie, no matter what they may personally be thinking in their heads, which doesn't matter to me what, what they're thinking, as long as they're being nice to me. And as long as we can get done what needs to get done, I don't care if they secretly hate me. That's on them. Again, it's on them what they think of me. I can't have jurisdiction over that. I just worry about getting done what I need to have done. Using those three principles. So that's a little hint, a little, little bit of uh, knowledge on my part in dealing with people in the fiction construct. Now I'm going to get to dealing with people in this, what we will call the quantum grammar community, which I don't know if anybody even calls it that anymore. I've been calling it since that since day one. Raven and I have been calling it that since day one, since before that name actually got hijacked from me and used by another entity. But those of you who've been following me for many years know exactly who I'm talking about. They, uh, this group likes to steal my stuff and claim it as their own. But I digress. So when I deal with people, you know, in the quantum grammar community context, I'm a little bit more strict because now I'm in a different position. Now I'm in the position of master of my vessel. And when people contact me via email, I'm the one that's in charge. They are my guest. And so certain terms and conditions must be observed, must be followed. I make those terms and conditions very clear within the first, at least within the first email. I provide links to videos to watch as to how you are expected to conduct yourself. For example, when you email me, you I tell you, that you must include your full correct name in every email. People just don't follow that. For some reason, either they don't watch the video or they don't listen. And that is one of the major, major stumbling blocks, I think, for some people in learning this correct sentence structure, communication, parser, syntax, grammar. They don't read the contracts. And then later on down the line, when they get called out on it, they get butthurt, they cry about it, they think I'm being unfair, they think I took advantage of them, when actually in this venue, this venue of quantum grammar, you are held to a higher standard than most people in the fiction. You are held to a higher standard, much higher level of performance and if you can't maintain that then you have no business being here and you certainly don't have any business using this in a foreign vessel and dry dock or a situation like that <laughs> if you don't have that 
particular eye for detail. So I'm just going to give one quick example here. There was a gentleman who contacted me on January 3rd. Uh, and the email is not marked confidential, so I, I can share a little bit of it, I, although I'm not going to give away their identity. They verbally say to me, they want to get my knowledge. They've been studying for seven years, uh, studying it all day, every day, which, by the way, from their emails and the subsequent emails I got from them, I, I wouldn't know that they studied this all day, every day for seven years because they, sh they exhibit no knowledge of it. But the point is, in this very first email, they don't include their correct name. So I send out my standard email response where I tell them, you know my full correct name. I ask you to give me the same consideration and share your full correct name. Otherwise we're not going to be contracting. And then I also offer a video consult where I say any further questions would be asked and answered there. Would you like me to schedule a video consult? On January 6th, they respond back with another email that has nothing to do with what I asked them. They're talking about something being filed into a court record in San Bernardino, California. And nothing to do with consultations or anything like that. They do include their correct name in this particular email on January 6th. And then on January 7th, I correspond back using their correct name, but giving them the same exact email that I sent before without the correct name, offering them a consultation. This is the second time I've offered them a consultation. On the 9th, they respond back for the wish of the knowledge of your knowledge for the correct of the use of the language for the peace with the war between the Jason Matthew Glass and, and then they give their own name. I mean, what in the hell is that for seven years of study and every day, all day? But that doesn't answer any question. It doesn't answer. It's not a clear yes or no that they want a consultation on January 9th. So then I respond back on January 9th. I have now asked you a yes or no. I have now asked you a yes or no question twice, and you have not given a clear yes or no answer. I will ask a third and final time before breaking bulk. Would you like me to schedule a consultation for you? That's January 9th. That's the third offer. On January 9th, they write back, yes, I accept. And then on January 9th, they send another email. Yes, I wish to learn. And neither of those emails that they just wrote, did they include their correct name at the bottom? Only in the one. So already they're not, I'm, obviously, they didn't watch the video on terms and conditions. So then on January uh, 9th, I send them a schedule possibility for a consultation. January 9th, I send them a schedule possibility for a video consultation. On January 19th, 10 days later, they say, I want your knowledge, blah, 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 blah. And they call, you know, cops, officers, or just thieves and blah, blah, blah. Nothing to do with consultations or grammar or anything. Just, I guess, basically complaining. On the 19th, 10 days later, after I sent them an offer for a scheduled location for a brief consultation, so then on January 19th, I respond back. I've been going back and forth with you trying to schedule a consultation. I offered a consult on January 11th. It took you over a week to respond, and you don't even acknowledge the offer. Please contact me when you are serious and are in a more stable position to proceed. Thank you. To me, that's responding with honor and grace, because I told them in the third offer that I was going to break bulk. So here we go. 
January 20th. Then they start giving excuses that they're not in the greatest position, trying to survive, phones acting up. Uh, but again, they're not accepting any offer. They're not asking for any offer or have a consultation or anything like that. Just talking about what they're doing with their personal life, which has nothing to do with me or what I do or learning correct sentence structure. Because if you folks, whatever your life situation is, it doesn't matter if you're in at the top of the most expensive penthouse or in the lowest gutter. If you are not in a position to learn grammar, then why are you aboard my vessel? Some of you may take that as harsh. And, it, you know, of course, it might be harsh for some of you. This is the reality. If you're not in a position to learn, you're not in a position to learn. If you're not in a position to keep a schedule and have a stable learning environment, then you should probably get that established before you try to learn this because it's going to be almost impossible to learn it unless you have a stable position and now space to learn it. So then on January 26th, which by the way, I didn't respond to that email because why would I? Clearly, they didn't ask a question or anything like that, so I'm not going to respond. And I'm not going to engage with this individual because they do seem to live a very chaotic life, haphazard. So then on January 26th, they say, I wish to learn your knowledge and join your class. And then they go on and complain about the judges and things like that again. Again, folks, they don't use their correct name at the bottom of the email. They don't follow the terms and conditions. So I'm trying to guide them to that area. I send them a exact facsimile of the first email I sent them where I ask them to share their full correct name because they know my full correct name so I know who the hell I'm talking to. Just credential yourself. January 26th, I sent that. On February 6th, <laughs> they contact me again, asking to speak with me. And again, they do not use their full correct name. They don't use their name at all. So they have violated the terms and conditions, continuously violate the terms and conditions of my vessel construct. And so I send them back yet another confidential Kuliana email asking, their share, asking them to share their full correct name. And if they want me to schedule them a consultation. So it just goes on and on. If a person is not in an ideal situation to learn this where they can follow simple rules and they're not distracted by noise of what's going on outside themselves, if they're not in a position to do that, then they're basically looking for a lifeline, which I do not provide lifelines. I provide grammar classes for those in a position to learn correct sentence structure. If an individual wants a lifeline to help them to survive out in the streets, I mean, there are shelters, there are programs in your local communities that you can apply for. I don't, I'm not involved in those things. My heart goes out to those people who are in those types of situations because I've been in those situations before in my life as well. And I also had to figure out how to get myself out of that type of situation and into a more uh, suitable environment for progressing as a human being and, and a productive member on this earth so that I can move forward with what I wanted to do. Learning correct sentence structure in those, in those positions is not ideal. I have tried to teach people 
in similar situations, correct sentence structure. And it's just, it's just, just the brain space isn't there because there's so much going on in people, people's lives where they have to worry about where their next meal's coming from. They have to worry about, you know, protecting themselves, safeguarding themselves. Why would you want to learn correct sentence structure in, in those scenarios when you have so much other stuff to deal with? So, I don't know. You can leave your uh, message in the comments. How you feel about how, you know, I deal with people in the confidential through my email address, which, by the way, this individual... None of his emails were marked confidential, so that's why I'm sharing it. And I did not share his identity, so no one's going to know who it is anyways except him if he listens to this. So I've not broken any... Con and anyways, it's my vessel, so I can do pretty much what I want, especially in scenarios where someone is completely and blatantly ignoring the terms and conditions of the vessel they're a guest of. Now, I don't think this individual is bad or malicious or anything like that. I just don't think that they're in a position to contract consistently with anyone or to do any type of consistent performance or to learn this grammar. That's my own personal perception of this based upon six years of teaching this, teaching all different types of people. The people that learn this the best are the people that have established basically a stable learning environment. Let's put it that way. All right, folks. Again, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, maybe some of you have similar experiences as teachers. I don't know if you're a teacher, if you teach anything. Um, but this is my experience, and I've shared it with you, and I hope you found value in it. Thank you. If you would like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, I offer several choices. The first one, and the easiest one, is to study the almost 900 free public videos on this YouTube channel that you're watching right now. The second option, if you want to see new content, is to click the Join button on my main YouTube page or under any video that you're watching. Click the Join button and you will see two tiers of membership. If you choose the second tier, the Loyalist Contributor tier, and you join that for a monthly support donation, you'll get new content, fresh content, exclusive content not available to the public every month. But keep in mind, there's already almost 900 videos here free to the public to study. And the third option is to contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen and this is for the serious students only, and apply for a correct grammar workshop. But please include your correct name when contacting me, and I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation, and you and I will have a conversation. You can ask me whatever you want. I'll answer your questions. I'll do the same with you. I'll ask you questions, and we'll see if indeed you are really serious or not. Thank you.